So welcome to Scrapbook Live. I am Megan Jacks. Today is Wednesday, March 20th. And the layout I have for you today is from uh, November of 2019. And it's using the Winterberry collection. It, that collection debuted in November of 2019. It had some beautiful purple hues um, with the the winter uh, theme. And so it was, it was, I remember it. I was a lovely, a lovely, lovely collection. I don't have a lot of it left in my own personal supply. I don't even know if they have any in my inventory. Um, but it, they use the dazzle punch for this particular layout. Is it um, giving you an idea of how to layer some pieces using different papers and using the punch? And so as I went into my uh, kind of what are my needs coming up for uh the layouts that I'm going to need. And so I decided that I wanted to use, well, I kind of always approach it as, do I have photos printed that I can use? Do I have photos on my phone that I can print that I can use for Scrapbook Live? And I really didn't have anything. I mean, all I have is like lacrosse photos and cat photos. And I've already scrapbooked quite a bit of those. So I knew coming up, I was going to, we were going to Arizona. And I thought I'll do an Arizona layout when I was like, oh, I'll go with the Mexico theme pack and I'll do, we're, we plan to go to one of our favorite Mexican restaurants. I'm like, I will do something with the mandala punch and we'll make it very festive. And then I couldn't find my Mexico theme pack. And so I was like, okay, scratch that. And then it's like, well, what else can I do? I said, well, I could use snow cap mountains and we're going to be taking a trip to Flagstaff to go to our NAU. Our middle child's graduating high school this year and we'll be starting at NAU this fall. It's like, okay, that'll be great. I know I'm going to need a layout for that. So that's what we're doing. And I said, I'm going to use Nordic winter, even though for the most part, winter will be gone from Flagstaff. It's really trying hard. They just keep getting some um, flurries that keep coming in, but I'm hoping in a couple of weeks, we won't necessarily have to deal with that. And we can just enjoy the mountains um, of the uh, of northern Arizona. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to be using Nordic winter, um, ignoring the winter part of it. We're using the tonal sides, which are just very um, earthy. And we'll be using snow-capped mountains. And because I'm using snow-capped mountains, um, I can't really put them under, upside down, under the photos. So I'm going to be flipping the layout upside down. And we'll be building those borders across the top. So I think it's going to work out really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my overhead camera. Just real quick, if you need the handout, if you're watching this live on Facebook right now, there is a link, I think, up in the description of the video that you'll be able to go to my blog, meganjacks.com, and you go to uh, Scrapbook Live, and it's going to be the um, handout for... Uh, March 20th. If you're watching this later on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description below that'll take you directly to that blog. All right. So here is the handout that you'll want to have printed. There is a QR code on here that'll take you directly to the blog, the original Creative Memories blog. Um, so if you want to see any additional photos or you need the wording larger or anything like that, you can use that QR code to go directly to it, or you can search the blog by month. Another hint, when you're using the Creative Memories blog and you are trying to find something and you happen to recognize or they tell you the collection that is being used, you can always go to the search bar, enter in the collection and keep it basic. Like here, I would have just typed in Winterberry. You also could have typed in if you knew the punch that is being used or a tool that's being used, especially if you're doing something like borders, use the name of the tool. Again, and keeping it very, um, don't get too wordy with it. Just type in dazzle. This is the dazzle border punch. So if you know the collection or the tool being used, you can type those into the search bar and it will pop up various blog articles with those tools or collections in use. Okay. So the layout today, as I mentioned before, they use the Winterberry collection. They use the Dazzle Punch. You can see that at the bottom with those scallop, kind of that uh, starry scallop effect at the very bottom of the layout. So the easiest way to keeping all of their measurements the same is going to be just swapping out a different tool, one of the blue and white punches that matches the theme of your layout. So in my case, I would be swapping, I'm swapping out for snow cap mountains. That will allow me to use all of their measurements, the width of the uh, pieces of paper that they punch the ends with, with the snow cap mountains. Now you may say, Megan, but I need to use something different. I have a different blue and white punch. I have, this is the new um, spring flower frame punch. Or maybe you wanna use a border maker cartridge. What do I do? How do I translate that? So um, uh, the border maker cartridges and our frame punches 
are a little bit different than our regular border punches. Quickly talking about these two punches. So we have Snowcap Mountains and the uh, Spring uh, Leaf Frame Punch. Remember, frame punches, you know it's a frame punch if it has this uh, silver line on the side. That's the easiest way to tell. You could use a sticker, put a dot on here right across the top that it's a frame punch, any way you want to note it. But if you don't have yours marked, you don't have the boxes, the easiest way to tell if it's a frame punch is that silver line. The difference between a frame punch and a regular border punch is the width of the bite of the pattern or the punch itself. So if you look here at Snowcap Mountains, which is on the left, you will see that that bite all the way across the top there is almost end to end on the white plastic. So coming here, here all the way over, takes up that full width of this space. Now, if we look at the frame punch, see the frame punch, there's about a quarter of an inch on either side. The actual bite is only two inches wide as compared to two and three eighths inches wide on the regular frame punches you can see. The reason that the frame punches are that way is because of the fact that they do frames, that the two inch bite, the two inch width is what allows it to do a frame. If you try to do a frame with something like snowcap mountains, it's not gonna work, but it will, or it, it takes a lot more mathy skills to be able to do that or some folding, whereas these frame punches were designed to turn corners. So frame punches, and our border maker cartridges are similar because they have that two inch wide bite. Border maker cartridges are two inches wide. So are frame punches. That's what they have in common. So if you want to use for this particular layout, they tell you you need to use two and three eighth inch wide strips of paper. This is outlined in step three. That works for our typical blue and white non frame, just the blue and white border punches. If you want to use a frame punch, I mentioned it here, you're going to want to cut your strips two inches wide. If you want to use a border maker cartridge, again, you're going to cut your strips two inches wide. Now, the overall layout here, the width of the four pieces that they want us to punch with a regular piece of, uh, with a regular border punch, is nine and a half inches wide. So that is what four inches wide here is going to give us, or excuse me, two and three eighths inches wide. The four strips is going to be nine and a half inches wide total of our strips of paper. But if you're using a BMC or you're using a frame punch, because that works best with your, um, your theme, you're going to probably need to come out here and go 10 inches wide, so you'll need five strips for the BMC or the frame punch. This is nine and a half inches is four strips with a border punch. All right, and that's what's outlined here in step three. Four strips with a traditional border punch. So if you're using a BMC or a frame punch, you're gonna need five strips that are cut two inches wide each. All right, so I wanted to make sure you guys knew that because I know sometimes when you're working along, you need to know how do I make this using a different tool. You will want to make sure you are using an edge style or a knockout style. It needs to stay attached to the paper. So you do not wanna use a chain style border punch or um, a BMC. All of the frame punches are edge punches, but sometimes we have different punches that are, um, that they create a chain. They remove themselves from the paper and just create a border. You wanna make sure you're staying attached. And so that's, um, Snowcap Mountains is gonna work great for that. All right, so now let's talk about paper selection a little bit. Uh, there are two layers to the background itself. You can see they have a striped, uh, a diagonal stripe piece as a very, very background piece. And then they cut another piece of paper down to 11 and a half inches square. I'll pull this up a little closer. So you can see those diagonal stripes around the perimeter of the layout. And then they cut that darker tonal purpley blue down to 11 and a half inches square. 
So for my layout, I wanted to go with a lighter neutral background, largely because I'm, we're visiting Flagstaff in the spring. I didn't want it to be too heavy. I wanted to make sure it was, um, you know, still light. Uh, so we're going with the beigey background that is this beigey tonal paper out of the Nordic winter. A great thing about the Nordic winter is all of the, or almost all, I don't have, I think the other, there's a lighter blue tonal piece in here that maybe does have a little bit more of a wintry feel to it, but the other colors, the, the, the tonal sides of those papers are all very, very neutral patterns and they don't really say spring, winter, summer, fall. They just have those earthy colors. So I've got my tonal background here. This is going to be what I'm actually going to put my different pieces of paper that I'm going to punch with the snowcap mountains. I'm going to use these four tonal papers. So I've got the darker brown stripe, the blue, the green, and this kind of this wood-esque um, grain uh, paper. So all four of these papers, I will be cutting down to the width that I actually need to use to punch with the snowcap mountains. Now that leaves me kind of with trying to figure out what am I going to do around the outside? I can cut my beige piece of paper down to 11 and a half inches square and then mount it on another piece of paper. I initially thought, well, maybe I would use, um, I would just use some cardstock, right? Because I don't feel so bad when I use a whole sheet of cardstock. I could make a frame out of the back. Um, but I kind of thought the blue was a little, the, this is navy behind it. And I thought navy was a little intense. And I really thought, well, maybe I would just go with this lighter blue. Um, when I say lighter, it's actually it's still darker, but it's still, it's lighter than navy. You can see here that it's much lighter than navy. It's a mid-tone blue when you're thinking navy being the darkest. So what I decided though, is I didn't want to use a full sheet of paper behind it. One of the things you can do in this particular case where they do have us just with that basically a quarter inch border all the way around our main background is we can cut it into strips. So instead of using a full sheet and layering a smaller square on top of it, what I'm actually going to do is cut four quarter inch strips of this blue paper and then just adhere it around the all the way around the layout. So I'm going to give it that um, frame treatment bit more on top of the layout with four pieces of paper rather than doing it matting it from behind. That will be a better um, use of my paper. My paper is a little bit directional but it's not so directional that um, it will be noticed when I do that treatment with that. So that is one difference I am going to make where they talk about um, using a background, step two, cutting your background piece to 11 and a half inches square. I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and just use some quarter inch strips all the way around. So I, I'm going to go ahead and I think we'll just go ahead and cut those pieces, those quarter inch strips. Part of it is because I want to have those strips in place before I start putting the rest of my layout together, just to make sure I get all my spacing right when I start adhering my pieces. And I want to know what that uh, smaller portion inside is so that I don't, you know, I can just have my spacing down. All right. So this is, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use this darker blue piece to go all the way around with four strips. So I need them to cut as quarter inch strips of paper. Quarter inch is all the way to the outside of the gray trimming mat here. So I'm going to come out there. If you, um, you could make them a little wider if you want. I just, the quarter inch is going to work fine for me. I do want to make them all the same size. So I'm going to cut four strips. Now with these four strips, grab my cutting mat here. I can just lay these on if I wanted to get an idea. We could probably just dry fit if we really wanted to. But you can see here, the overall effect I'm gonna have is going to be the same. But I know I'm going to just go ahead and put these on 
in the same bit. One thing you could do when working with these, I guess I should move this up so you can see it. You would have the option by using the strips if you wanted to come in and give yourself, I actually kind of maybe like that idea of coming in just a little bit. I am coming in a half an inch. So, so I'm, I'm giving myself a quarter inch of that outside border. No, I mean, I'm not going to adhere these pieces yet because I want to see, I think I'm going to like that idea. And the reason I think I'm going to like it is because, um, it makes me think of wood beams and, um, you know, just, I don't know, there's something about it with, I think the overall vibe of the layout will work really well with having those in just a little bit. I've got nice contrast between the um, two colors here. So that I'm going to actually just leave this for now. I'm going to dry fit the other pieces on here so that I can make sure that the spacing will work fine. I think if you are using um, BMCs or the frame punches and you have to go clear across 10 inches, you might be a little close to the outside edges and you might need to bring this all the way back out so you have more space in your uh, middle of your page. But I think because I'm working with the, uh, the other punch where I'm only coming up nine and a half inches, that I think I'm going to be okay to be able to do that. So. Let me go ahead. I'm going to set this aside for a second because I don't need my cutting mat for the next part that we're going to do. We're going to be cutting and punching some strips of paper. So remember I talked about the four pieces, the four colors, the blue, the brown stripe, the green, and the lighter uh, brown piece. So I will confess I've already got a few of these cut, so I'm only going to do one or two of these. And I will probably do, let me do the blue. So I'm gonna come over here to two and three eighths inches wide. Now, the one thing you wanna do here, they actually tell you to cut your paper down to two and three eighths inches wide by nine inches tall. I have a tendency to um, cut to 12 inch lengths punch and then cut. So whatever you wanna do, you can either cut your pieces to the dimension they give um, and so you cut to two and three eighths inches wide by nine and a half inches tall and then punch, or you can cut to two and three eighths inches wide punch and then trim to nine and a half. But whatever you do, stay consistent throughout. So I am going to cut to two and three eighths inches wide and then punch. I will cut my length after I've punched. So two and three eighths. And then I would use my border punch. Two and three eighths is gonna come, you're gonna be able to slide it in right between those two lines. You see we got two, those two black lines, your piece of paper is gonna slide in right between those two and you can feed it all the way to the back. And then you'll be able to punch. You could also flip it over and look at it from the back side if you want to see how it lines up in there. But for the most part, is you've got your guidelines on the front, that should work fine. So we are going to need a total of seven pieces. The one thing I want to call out though, the way we layer, we can see this dark purple one. We can see the outside one over here. And then we can see all three top and bottom of the ones that are layered on top. There are two, this one and this one. So the bottom middles that we cannot see the full piece. So with that in mind, don't, you could probably, if you know how you're going to arrange them, you don't necessarily need your middle two pieces to be the full nine and a half inches. You're going to want your outside pieces to be nine and a half inches. You want um, the second part of step two, they tell us our second layer is nine inches. You'll want those pieces to be that full nine inch unless you're prepared to cut and piece them back across the top. Um, it really just depends on how you, much you want to try to conserve paper. I do see a question from Kathy. If she has an older punch that doesn't have the lines, how does she know how to line it up? In that particular case, you're going to want to flip your punch over. You'll take your paper and you'll feed it in from the back or from the, so that you can see the front side of it, or excuse me, so you can see the bottom side of it and you can see that paper starting to come through. 
and then you'll just have to line it up. Same thing probably for the border maker punches. Um, you'll have to look at it from the back side so that you can see it lined up. Okay, so here we have two, uh, we have, it's two and three inches wide. I have punched it. I'm gonna now go ahead and trim this down. I already have one of these done at um, one and a half, or excuse me, nine and a half inches. So I'm going to cut this one to nine. You can see, um, here's one I have that's already done and I cut it to nine and a half. So this one I'm gonna do to nine inches. Tip of my mountain, or you it, you can just cut off three inches from the end. That's probably the easiest. Cut off three inches from the end. Scrap piece. If you really wanted to, I probably could have punched the other end um, and used it for my second row because I think we will be able to layer some things. But I would go ahead and punch this, or excuse me, cut this off, save it. If we decide, you decide that you're going to go ahead and punch it, you will always be able to use a post-it note, attach it to the bottom end like this, and then I can feed it back into my punch and punch that top edge. If I think I can use this scrap of paper to be um, those um, short pieces that we don't need the full length of. All right, so there's the blue one and I need to look because I do have several of these pieces already cut and I cannot remember what are the colors I'm using on the front. I kind of know. I laid this out last night. So I'm bringing back over my pieces. You'd want to continue those at least to get your, you know, the first set of pieces ready to go. This is my longer blue piece. I want it on one side. I cut my, my darker brown, that's the other color. I've got my two darker uh, pieces on the outside edges. The lighter brown, I'm gonna bring in the middle and then the green. So here's how my pieces are gonna be laid out. Now I've only got four different colors to work from, work with. So when I trimmed my bottom edges off to get my pieces to be that nine and a half inches, I did punch the bottom edges. This was going to allow me to figure out if I would, how I could do my other colors because I wanted to make sure um, things were going to work out. So I have all four colors. So basically what I'm doing here is I am testing for placement of my um, different colors. If you have seven different colors to work with, that's great. I only had four, so I needed to have my four colors on the background, then I picked three colors that can come forward. Now, what I'm going to do here is I want to make sure my colors are separated from each other. So I'm going to have the green over here. Uh, on this side over here, I will probably come in. Well, I could do, I think I needed the blue over here, and I was going to do the dark brown in the middle. I was going to leave off the tonal brown or excuse me, the lighter beigey tan color. So that is how I'm pretty certain they're going to overlap. My other option is to come in and I could bring the blue back over here and come in with the lighter. And I, I'll have my pictures and stuff on top. But really what I'm looking for here is, you know, imagine this is what it's going to look like across the top. So do I like that? Do I like it with the brown? I just want to make sure that my colors are separated from each other. At the bottom edge, I would see blue, brown, and green. I would not see any of this at the bottom edge. I won't see any of this lighter color. Do I want to see a lighter color at the bottom? This is where if you are using the full strips, you have a little bit more flexibility there. You can actually see. So across the bottom, you know, this is if I think about what I'm going to see at the bottom, I would see, now I could, oh, I know I did not use blue over here. I must have used this and I left the blue off. I think this is what I went with. Yes, I'm almost positive this is what I went with because when I was mocking it up, 
I actually decided to use a blue mat. So I'm bringing the blue that's over here over to this side. And that's why I decided I didn't need a blue in my second level of mountains down here because I'm using the blue mat. So with that in mind, I'll be able to go ahead and start making my um, piece adjustments. Now, as I mentioned before, this piece right here, which is my background piece, you can you can trim your pieces. I could just cut all these and make them to nine inches, um, but I really don't want to cut another piece of the um, the green and the beigey brown, the tan color, because these two will not be seen at all here. These this one, these this green one and this one. So what I'll be able to do is I can come over here. And I think I can replace the green with my shorter strip, the tan with my shorter strip, and I will be able to come in here. I'll have to trim this off at the bottom. This will be on this side again, trimming it off at the bottom. And then, um, I'll need to, I will need to cut one more full brown piece to cover here. But see, I don't need the full length of green in the very back and I don't need that full tan in the very back. They're going to get covered up. So let me go ahead and I need to determine, I'm gonna go ahead and cut another brown stripe to two and three eighths inches wide. And then I will be able to punch it and get it put in place. Um, let's see here, two and three eighths. If you follow their directions, it'll probably go together, together much smoother. Um, but I'm trying to save a little bit of paper here. So two and three eighths, I'm gonna punch this. And then they want this second row to be cut to nine inches. So I'll cut off three inches and see how that looks. It gives me a half inch um, setback, which might be a little too much. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little too, too aggressive up here at the top. If I bring this down, I bring this one down and this one down. Let me, I'm seeing all that is here that I need to cut off at the bottom to bring it level with the brown here and the blue here. I would need to trim all of this at the bottom. But before I start trimming, I'm going to put this four and a half by six and a half inch mat on there because that's what they tell me I need to be able to do. I need to be able to get a four and a half by six and a half inch mat on this side and the same height over here. But what I'm seeing is I do have plenty of space here at the bottom still. So even if I were to come in here and cut all these pieces flush at the bottom, I still have space for my four and a half wide by six and a half inch tall mat. That's what I was wanting to make sure that I wasn't going to get, you know, too squeezed in there. All right. So with that in mind, I think what I'm going to do, well, let me figure out, I need a ruler. I'm going to need a ruler so I can figure out at the bottom how much do I have to cut off. I need to cut about seven eighths of an inch off here. I'm going to make a line where I want to cut that one. This one. Well, let me measure from the top edge. How tall is that? It looks like I need to be closer to eight and a half inches from my top peak here of my mountains the top peak of my mountains, eight and a half. 
this might be a measurement that is going to depend on your punch that you're using and how much you need to offset so you can see enough of the pattern. Eight and a half inches is how long I want this second row or how tall I want this second row of pieces to be. Eight and a half. So I'm taking an extra, an extra half an inch off to get the spacing to work right at the top. So they said that second row would be nine inches tall because Snowcap Mountains is just has a little bit more, you know, depth down into the pattern. It comes down a little further. Um, I the eight and a half worked better. Remember, nothing is adhered yet. I'm dry fitting. That's why if things look a little wonky, they probably do. And I lost one of my. There it is, half inch strips. You want your pieces to be flush at the bottom. And I want them to be spaced evenly across. Just dry fitting. The dry fitting is going to help me figure out spacing. I wanna make sure I kind of have an even spacing across the bottom and across the top here between um, you know, the bottom of my edge of my pieces here and the top up here. Once I figure out where everything looks to be good, I'm gonna make sure my background is centered on my cutting mat because I will be coming in here and using my ruler to double check things. I can figure out, I'm gonna grab my T-square. Coming up here at the top, the top edge looks to be, I am about one and a quarter from the top edge. That is where my, um, the top of my snow-capped mountains are on my background. So that's definitely good to know. And I look to be, looks like I need to be about an inch, let's see here. I want the six inch mark to come right here. So it's actually gonna be easier for me when I start putting these in, leave my T-square ruler so that the bottom edge of my ruler here comes at that one and a quarter. And then I want this edge here to be right at six inches. So I'm gonna grab some tape or some repositionable adhesive. Move this up just a little bit. I'm gonna grab some repo adhesive and start putting these pieces in. So I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up. My little strips don't matter at the moment. I'll come in and put those in. The bottom edge on my T-square is at one and a quarter inches from the top. This edge needs to be lined up at six inches. Now the challenge is I've got a short piece here, so I don't know if I have it on straight. So I'm gonna just kind of loosely place it in, but it looks to be at six inches. Then what I'll be able to do is come in here. I know this piece, that edge needs to fit right there. That's how the punches line up, right? So I'm using my design of my punch to line up where my next edge, this means my tips should be both one and a half or one and a quarter inches from the top but I'm gonna grab my t-square ruler and bring it down to the bottom and it's gonna let me get this paper lined up straight I'm roughly an inch and a quarter from the outside edge that looks good. Next piece is going to be the lighter brown, just a small little piece of it. I don't need a lot across the top because it gets covered up. 
it's going to slide in just right next to it. I am going to make sure that the it's seamless as it comes through that pattern. And then my last piece that I'll put on this is going to be the blue piece on the outside edge. And if I want to come in, I can bring in my T-square. It looks really good here. Lining it up for height. There we go. Double check across the bottom. I look really good across the bottom. I am nice and straight for the most part. I got a little bit of a wonky there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So then what I'll do is these other pieces that I'll come in, they're gonna go flush at the bottom. I believe that the mountains are actually, it looks like, the valley of the mountains will line up for the most part with the seams of the previous pieces. So that's how I'm going to do it. So that the seam of the mountain, and you'll have to play around with it, find out where the middle of your design is so that you can line the middle up with the seam. Bring in my T-square again so I know across the bottom. There's that piece. This one's just gonna sit next to it. I will be putting a sticker across the bottom. So if I don't, if it's not perfect for some reason, if your measurements is just a tiny bit off, you'll be able to cover that edge with a sticker. So I'm not too concerned if it's a little, I can see a little bit of blue sticking out under that one. And this last piece comes in. All right. So there's the majority of my background. Now what I'm going to do is just let's take a peek at it again with these. I could either go all the way to the outside edge, giving that faux matted look to the background. Or I could bring it in by about a quarter of an inch. I think I'm gonna bring it in. And for this one, if I can find where I put it, I'm gonna use my mini tape runner. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I had to take it out of, Long story, I needed a case for it and I had to take it out. I needed a case. I'd left a case downstairs and I was too lazy to go get another one. All right, so my mini tape runner, which is really great because see how this gets that nice little, yeah, there we go, you can see a nice thin strip of um, adhesive. You'll be able to run down those thin pieces. So it works really well when you've got something like a thin piece of paper that you don't necessarily want to use your um, repo adhesive but I ran out, it's empty. So I'm gonna have to come back and use repo. I don't have a spare mini up here, a refill up here. Before you started hearing these strips in place, again, make sure you've got your background piece is, um, is on your mat. Nice and you wanna make sure your background piece is centered on your mat. And there we go, then we put that on. And then I'll just be able to work my way all the way around. Oh, I see I'm a little. Quarter of an inch is what I'm going for. So I am making sure that outside edge of my strip is at a quarter inch from the outside edge of the paper. 
I have to rotate my background. I can't. It'll be easier than trying to lean across my back, my page to get this lined up. One last piece to put in place, and then we'll be able to move on to some of the finishing details, putting the photos or the mats on. I don't have the photos yet. I'll be, as nice as I'll know exactly what photos I need to take. And I'm actually gonna make some alterations to the layout, giving myself the ability to add some peekaboo pockets, just because, um, you know, I, we like sometimes options to be able to put more pictures on a page, right? So here we go. There's the main background. Now they have us using mats. Uh, if you don't have mats, you can use, um, just cut your papers to be the right size. So they have us with a four and a half by six and a half inch mat. They want us uh, in the layout sample or the, excuse me, the, uh, the blog sample, the mat that they use out of the Winterberry collection kind of had a, um, little detail to it that allowed if they used a three and a half by five and a half inch photo on there, it showed a little bit more detail that was on the mat itself. But I have a pretty basic mat here that just has base, you know, that tonal, that darker tonal blue or the mid tonal blue around it. So if I want to use that with a four by six photo, I definitely can. And that would allow me to come in here with a peekaboo pocket and just peekaboo that. Now, one of the details I thought that would be kind of fun and to help lighten it up a little bit was to come in. This is another um, mat. It's a four and a half by six and a half inch mat out of the Nordic Winter Collection. I just thought it was pretty with the little berries on there. And I thought that might be pretty as a little um, mat around the side. I don't know for sure um, just because sometimes that looks great when you have just basically a solid photo or like a placeholder here, a piece of cardstock. However, once I put a photo there, maybe it's not going to necessarily make sense. Maybe I would actually need it to be the opposite where I have the berries in the background. And then I have a piece like that. That actually might work probably a little bit better. So I probably will go, I think I'm going to do the berries in the background. This piece, uh, this mat here, I am actually going to go ahead and cut this mat down to four and by six. So I can take off, if I take off a quarter inch all the way around, that should get me to the four by six. If you want to, I probably, I'm just going to take off the quarter inch all the way around rather than trying to do it in big chunks. This is a mat that is a big and chunky that I probably could do a big chunk that I could save for another project if I wanted to pull that blue over as a tag or something like that. It does have this lovely yellow on the back side, but I can use that, save those as scraps. I don't know how, what are the smallest size scraps you guys save? Um, the saving strips like this would be pretty small for me. But the reason I'm cutting this down to four and a half by, or excuse me, to four by six is this will fit in my peekaboo pocket. This will slide into my peekaboo pocket. Then I can take my four by six photo and I can trim it down. Now, if I'm using a photo, if it's actually a photo, I'm probably gonna use my personal trimmer to trim it down. But since I'm just cutting cardstock, I'm gonna use my rotary trimmer. I can bring this down to three and three quarters wide. And I could take off a quarter inch from the other side or one of the short ends. So that's gonna be, um, take it down to five and three quarters. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll have just a really pretty blue, thin um, border mat around my photo that and this, this whole thing will slide into a four by six peekaboo pocket. If I wanted a little bit more of the blue showing, I could trim my photo down a little bit more. I only took a quarter inch off. So most four by sixes, you'll find yourself being able to trim off a quarter inch from two sides. So then this will sit on here as such. And that looks really pretty. The blue just kind of gives me a little bit of separation for my photo between my photo and the berries. Now on the other side here, if we look at our original sample, they want us to use, uh, to cut down some more mats to four inches wide by three inches tall. That's outlined in step four. 
And the reason that they do that is because they actually squish the, uh, the four by three, let me show you four by these, these rectangles are three by four. So if I were to take these as my mats and put them next to each other on top, imagine these are actual mats, not just gray pieces. I've got a space up here at the top, or it could be at the bottom, wherever you want it to be. For this particular winterberry collection, that worked out really well for them to come in. They've used the, it's a brand, it's a brand new day little title piece up here at the top. I don't know if that was a sticker. They cut it out of a mat where they got it from, but they had a narrow little piece at the top that worked really well. Now, this would be something where, again, if you had cut, depending on how you cut your pieces, I could come in if I wanted to work in some of this yellow or other types of things, I could start piecing in so forth, but I didn't want to do that. So um, I, instead of doing four inch tall pieces, I am literally going to take two different four and a half by six and a half inch mats. These are both the larger mats. You can see here they have the journaling boxes. If I cut these mats in half, I can stack one on top of the other. And then I would be able to come in with um, my photos and fit my photos in there. Now, the other option I can do, as this is what I thought about, I, I'm not sure um, I could come in and use um, some journaling. I could, uh, they have these lined journaling boxes. Now this doesn't work out maybe so well since I ended up using the berry over here. Um, I could come in, they have a different one. I could use this one. I could make a journaling piece, but I don't think I will. I think I'll stick just with photos. I'm sure there'll be pl there are plenty of pieces. I'm going to, if I'm going to peekaboo pocket this, I can make, I can put some journaling inside the peekaboo pocket. So I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and cut these two mats down in half. So these are six and a half inches wide. So I'm going to cut it at three and a quarter. That should be cutting it in half. So three and a quarter. So by doing this, I'm a little wide. I'm wider than what they show in the example. Um, I don't, I don't have as much of this outside edge showing. So if I wanted to change this, I can come in with my, uh, my mats here and I can narrow them up a little bit. I could take off. I think I can take off a quarter of an inch. Let me see here. I can take an eighth, I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off of each side. I don't wanna come in too much because I, I wanna make sure when I put my photo on that I still cover up the um, journal space here. So I'm gonna take an eighth inch off of each side of the short size, so just the width. I'm not, that'll let a little bit more of that here. So the overall width is going to be closer to four and a quarter rather than four and a half. There we go. There we go. So just a little bit more showing on either side. Now they, in our sample, they, they are the, the directions, they had us using a fairly small, a two and a half by three and a half inch photo. Um, it's a little small, remember I got a little bit more of a chunky mat here. If I wanted to come in with a three by four, now my mat spacing doesn't quite work. So what I can do is I can trim down, this is a three by four. I think if I were to trim it down, I need to take probably an eighth of an inch off the width. So 
So now I'm at three and seven eighths. I need to take some off the top, the height too. It needs to come down instead of three by four, maybe two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. This is where you're just kind of figuring out what works best for your photos and the size of the mat that you chose. That's going to work out fine. Little modifications. You can follow the directions from the blog exactly if that works for your photos and your supplies. For my supplies, it just worked a little bit better to not have that narrow strip across the top. So here we go. We've got some photos in there. This mat kind of stands out a little bit more because I don't have anything lighter over on the side to, to, um, to offset it. Now, one of the things I could do depend, well, okay. So I take that back because I still don't have across the bottom. I am going to use out of the Nordic winter, um, paper. I'm going to use this border because it makes me think of trees. And I thought that was the easiest one to use. So it's going to come across the bottom and it is a, a bit lighter. So what I'm looking for here is I'm centering it on and I can see, see how I have that edge here is not straight up and down. It's, it's cut to the design. What I'm looking for is to see if I'm going to be able to do, I can come over to this one right here and cut along that edge and mimic that, uh, that same look. There we go. putting that on and just giving, letting me see that, okay, I do have a little, I'm bringing in a little bit more of that lighter white background to some of the pieces. The lightest part of your design or your photos will always be the part that grabs your eye. That's just how it kind of is. And so sometimes you want to have those lighter elements um, balanced out right? So your eye doesn't just go straight to this mat because it's got the lighter bits of it. Now, when I have my photos on here, I may have lighter elements in my photo, the uh, bright blue sky, or maybe there will be snow on the ground. I have no idea. So that would allow those pieces to catch your eye a little bit. I like this berry um, mat here, but I definitely need to have those lighter elements brought in. There are some, um, the embellishments within this collection. If I were to use the trees, these trees are from the, they're the embossed trees, but they have a little bit of snow on them. And I'm just not hundred percent sure. Um, I might be able to, to incorporate them. I'm not, I, I won't know though, until I have my photos, whether or not they stand out and look kind of strange, or maybe I'll need to use another set of, um, photos or something like that. So starting to see how it takes shape. If I want to bring this down just a little bit, remember I'm building it in reverse. I'm doing, building it upside down from the original. So if I look at the original, flip it upside down, they have the title coming across more of the design area. So if I wanted to be able to bring in, maybe I would have my trees up here at the top though it's got my, all my white still over here. Maybe my trees would come over here and I could come across the top here with um, some stickers that say Flagstaff or NAU, I don't know. Kind of funny about NAU, they are the Lumberjacks, that is their mascot and they um, shorten it to Jacks, so it's pretty funny. My child will be a Jacks on two levels. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put things in place. Just using a little bit of repo, I may have to make some adjustments.
I'm going to put just a tiny bit of repo there. Remember this, this, uh, blue mat with the gray placeholder on top will ultimately end up in a peekaboo pocket. So I want to make sure I can just pull it off there without any problems. So I'll be able to get three photos in this space right here. And then I have room for two photos on this side. So that actually should work out pretty well for our jaunt up to NAU. And then a complimentary page um, is, probably going to be any place that we stop, you know, if we stop another place on the drive up or drive down, or maybe just some other pictures, um, from the, the drive up the rim to towards Flagstaff. I don't know what's, we'll swing back through, um, Sedona or, um, so forth. We are moving back to Arizona. So I have to remind myself, we have plenty of time to be able to explore. It's not like we have to try to fit everything in because we're not going to be returning. And then I will be able to come in. You can see here that by, if I can bring in the lighter elements, it will work out great. Maybe using white letters for my title, which will actually stand out really nicely against the mountains at the top. Um, so definitely some options there. The other thing I could do, I could come in with a custom cutting system, or I could make a little square journal box if I thought that I would have some space over here for a little bit of journaling. Um, so I've got some options. I will probably keep this journal box with my layout as I'm waiting for my photos so that I will be able to remind myself if I wanted to utilize this in any other way uh, as I'm putting uh, the final touches on here. But for the most part, I think I will probably try to come in and balance out the white. Uh, I will, I don't know how I'm going to title this yet because if I don't know, this, this one may have to just be more pictures um, in and around Flagstaff. I, in my mind, I was gonna have pictures of my child standing on NAU campus, but I really think that's gonna have to be more the colors of the university rather than these more neutral outdoorsy blues, greens, and browns um, as I'm thinking about it. And maybe this will be just, um, we'll find some good overlooks. I mean, this is definitely any part of um, once you get into the high country uh, and up and around Flagstaff, this will work really well. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, I have plenty of pictures from era from Washington State to be able to um, to utilize here. So definitely, um, definitely like how this turned out. All right, so there we go with today's layout. Um, hopefully you have a chance to put it together, um, share your how, share how you did it, what you put together, what tools you used. I'm looking forward to seeing those. There is a hashtag on the handout if you do share it in the um, scrapbooking with Megan or ideas and inspiration group, whichever one you're in or if you're in both, um, you can use that hashtag to share it. Um, now things coming up. Tomorrow, Tessa and I are doing our free um, National Scrapbook Day Project Workshop. And so that's going to be at 10 o'clock tomorrow. It's a, like I said, it's a free workshop. You can, if you're not already registered, you'll want to register. We'll be getting the, um, the Zoom link out today, I believe. Um, that's at 10 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be putting together the project recipe. We are also putting together the projects in the project booklet. So if you ordered the customer bundle, you'll have everything you need to complete those layouts. I think there's like seven two-page layouts. So that should be a lot of fun. So um, next up after that, uh, Sally's asking how you register. And that is you can go to Megan and Tessa at uh, .com and it'll be on there. So let me actually, let me see if I can just type that into the comments here. Um, if you're later watching this on Facebook, I will, or excuse me, on um, uh, YouTube, I will make sure it's on there. I, there we go. Um, I've got to be able to type the right. If you go to meganandtessa.com, that should, uh, you'll find a spot on there where you'll be able to, uh, to register and it's free and we'll just send you actually, I don't, I don't know what to send you. We'll make sure you have the zoom link for tomorrow's class. And even if and it's going to end up on our YouTube channel later, so if you can't attend it live, there it will be recorded. That will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can always catch it on there. We'll share it later, but if you want to attend the live version or the live, um, as we're doing it, you'll want to make sure that you um, tune in tomorrow. So this Friday, 
Um, might be a pre preview Friday for Creative Memories. I'm not 100% sure. Um, we will see what comes. And then um, I think I think the next big product launch for Creative Memories, um, April, I think will actually launch on April 1st, I think. So um, that's kind of it is we're coming through the middle to the end of March. And um, Betty's asking how long the NSC class is going to last. Um, I'm going to say it might be a couple hours for us to get through all seven layouts. Uh, Tessa put together the booklet yesterday, the project booklet, and she said it was pretty straightforward. Um, but it does take a little bit of time. And we don't like to go too fast because we know people are sometimes trying to crop along with us. And so um, it does take us a little bit more. And of course, you know, I have to like yell at her a few times or something like that, or she'll probably yell at me. I am putting together the project recipe. So I'll be kicking it off with the project recipe part. And then she's going to dive into the project booklet. All right. So, um, and then I'm trying to think what else is coming up. Oh, I will have scrapbook live next week. We're going to do borders. It's the last Wednesday of the month. It's so hard to believe last Wednesday of March. We're going to do, we're going to work with the border maker cartridge. We are going to, I'm going to be demoing stuff with the new bears chain border maker cartridge. It is super cute. It came out with the baby collection. I'm looking around. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, so I have just some fun um, techniques that we'll be doing pretty straightforward on um, probably won't be getting too wild and crazy. I do have one, um, I don't want to call it advanced, but it's a little outside maybe the norm technique that we'll be doing next week with the bears or any chain style border maker cartridge. It does not have to be um, the specific bears one. So it, it, it's a chain style will work the best. And remember the chain style means that it's going to release completely from the paper and it creates a chain of, um, in this particular case, creates a chain of bears. And I had a chain of bears I could show you and I don't know where it went. I am a mess. Um, oh, here it is. Makes a chain. See these cute little bears. So the chain style, all border maker cartridges uh, for the most part can become a chain, but the way we're going to use it for one of the techniques, we really want it to be a chain. Um, the other ones you could make it, you can just cut them to turn them into a chain uh, to release them from the paper. But one of the techniques we're going to do next week, you really are going to want to have a chain style. And the reality of it is, is just grab any chain style, grab some cardstock and you'll be able to do what we're going to do. And so that you can just see how the technique works. And then you'll be able to carry it forward into other, um, the other projects that work best for you. So, um, but I'll have all those details for you next week. Um, it'll be on my blog on Tuesday and then Wednesday we'll have scrapbook live. After that, the first two weeks of April, there will be no scrapbook live because I am traveling for spring break. I come home for two days and then I go to Mexico for five days. And so I know the first two weeks of April, I'm almost 99% positive there will be no scrapbook live. I might try to pop in maybe really quick from Arizona next on the Wednesday, that first Wednesday in April and just say hi. Um, but I don't think I'll, I won't, I won't have a project to share. Um, after I get back from Mexico, we are going to be diving into our prepping our home to actually list um, for sale. Um, the very, I think the very first, either very, very end of April or the first week of May. So again, I may not be able to come on for Scrapbook Live. I don't know on those yet. So um, just bear with me and don't forget about me if I can't do much in April just because of, of, of some of those things. But well, there's past Scrapbook Lives that you could always in. And just so you know, Power Hour will be going on. Um, Tess and I have been working out those days. They are a huge priority for her and I, and definitely for me, making sure that we can um, do the Power Hours. So um, April, May, and June, and July will definitely have Power Hours. Um, Summer Scrap is going to be going on. It's just Scrapbook Live gets to be um, a little bit um, just trying to work those in sometimes. So I think that's all I have for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and staying with me today as we work through this project. Um, if you do share it, please use the hashtag. It makes it a little easier to find if people want to go back and look later. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I always try to help where I can. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the week and a very scrappy weekend. Thanks for joining me.